What about now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. And okay. I just realized, thanks for, thanks for letting me know that my audio wasn't coming through. So now I'm here. So can you see this? Can you see the screen? Uh, yes, I see three screens. All right. So, so this screen right here is showing us currently what the cocoa output looks like, right? So you see here, it's just a green background. So we have a green background with some weird black lines going through the green background, right? Right. So that makes us think what? That the gimme is probably good? Um, I don't know. <laughs> right. So in any case, that's what this that's what happens is I get a somewhat green screen. Uh, and then that's about it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open it up. And we're going to see what we can see on the inside. So I got to get all the screws out. Yeah, this this screwdriver is not going to cut it. I'll be back in just a second. I've got to get a screwdriver with a slightly bigger head. Oh, okay. Sockmaster is calling too. Let's add Sockmaster to the call. Hey, hey, Sockmaster. You got a copy on me? I'm here. All right, I got to go find a different size screwdriver. I can't open this thing up right now. The only tools I have on me right now are my precision tools. And my Phillips head is too small to open up the cocoa. So I'm going to go get a grown-up size screwdriver. I'll be right back. So I don't know how many I don't know how many live computer surgeries have been done before. I know I know they've done live surgeries of people getting like their stomach stapled and those type of operations, the gastro bypass surgery and all that kind of crap. I don't know how many live streams of Coco 3 surgeries have actually taken place in recorded history. All right, so here's two of my back screws. These are uh, Canadian screws too, by the way. Fine workmanship. This, this particular Coco is a Canadian Coco. I, I got it from Neil Blanchard. And um, it even says on here the color... Uh, oh, it's, so it's the... Or ordinateur color three three day one twenty eight yeah so it's actually got this like like lay French stuff on here it's the Great. extra high quality version yes <laughs> fine French craftsmanship actually where does it say it was manufactured does it even say uh, yes, for sir Korea oh was it was it done in Korea. All right, let's awesome. get all the screws out. Okay, there's two screws. Okay, the two back screws, hopefully I don't need to get those out. So let me show you too, before I before I do it again, I'm gonna show you what the current screen looks like, Sockmaster. When I turn on the Coco, can you see this? I'll it's make a it little bigger. <clears throat> postage stamp. Um. Yeah, okay, so that's the screen right now. It's kind of green and it's like semi-graphical. I have never seen anything like this before. Okay. That's really weird. Okay. And now that we've done that, let's see if we can pop the top. Oh, I'm still missing a screw here. I don't know. I missed a screw. Okay, here's there's a handful of screws of so this this screw here in the front of the case did not come out. <coughs> and I appear to have an assortment of case screws too. So these are not the original case screws because I've got three different colored screws here. I've got a black one, a couple of like bronze colored ones, and then a silver one. So uh, name your screw. Okay. So here's the guts. Here's Here's my memory board. This is a Disto memory board. Also Canadian. Canadian, eh? There's my gimme. 
And there's my current CPU. In a socket. In a socket, yeah, because it's a 6309. I would suspect that. You would suspect that. Okay. So that will be the first thing I will remove. And, and luckily today they came in the two 6309s that Richard Lorbieski sent me. So, so we'll try that first. And I'm looking in the socket here. Yeah, the edges of the legs of this processor almost look like they've got rust on them. All right, I'm going to move the uh, keyboard out of the way for just a second. Okay, keyboard has been removed, and I'm going to I'm going to unplug this too. Right, probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, computer's unplugged. Let's. Uh, where's the CPU? CPU is right here. Okay, and I also ordered an IC puller, which I don't have today, so I'm having to do the old-fashioned screwdriver trick. Okay, so here's the CPU. I don't know how well you guys can see it. This is the current CPU I just pulled out. Yeah, the sides of the legs look like they've got, like, Hold on, camera. solder shrapnel on the sides of these legs there. There's, like, some serious... It almost looks like maybe they broke off a few leads and had to solder them back on. There's solder shrapnel on the sides of the CPU. Now, I didn't notice which way this thing came out, so when I go to put it back in... <laughs> the dimple towards your video jacks. Okay, the dimple goes towards the video jacks. Okay. All right, now, here's the next, here's the $500 question. What the, okay, here's my new CPUs. All right. Here's my new 6309s. Not one, but two. And they even have the little Hitachi. So these are officials. So if it's a 6309, the only source of these is, is the Hitachi brand. There's no, like, uh, aftermarket 6309s. I don't think so. Okay, when you say the dimple, that's the one that's got the little tiny indent in it, right? Uh, one one side of it has probably a little cutout in the middle. And that's basically pin one of the socket, right? Yep. Okay. So, okay, so, the, so you're saying the dimple part's going to go towards the video connections. I'm going to assume that's the dimple part. From what I remember, yeah. I wish I would have noticed this before I took it apart. Well, every other chip is also oriented the same way. So you look for the dimple on any other chip. They're all the same way. Yeah, so basically from my angle right now, all, all the writing is upside down. Yeah. And so this would be consistent with that. Okay. Now, do I want to go ahead and try to push it all the way in, or can I just leave it like 75% in in case I need to reorient it? <clears throat> Push it all the way in. That's what she said. All right. So, it's in there. It is firmly seated. Let me plug it back in and apply power. All right. Oh, crap. I just dropped my damn camera. Uh, there's my cat. The psycho cat from hell. All right. So, here's the Coco. We are... This is the new CPU I just reinserted. Um, let's... Apply power to the Coco. I still have the same green screen. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So Turn what's the power and start poking the gimme? Poking it, meaning like uh, press down on it. <clears throat> with with it being unplugged, or just power off? Power off. It doesn't matter. Okay. So just start pushing down on the gimme. Press in and push in all the sides of the socket. Just squeeze it a bit. Okay. So that's the gimme right there. We are pushing down on the gimme. What's a gimme? <laughs> What's a gimme? <laughs> okay. So that didn't work. Should I try to uh, dethrone the gimme and reinsert it? Um... I guess 
Pull out the memory and put it back in next. <laughs> okay. And now the memory, should this just pull straight up? Yep. I've never removed a 512 board before. <clears throat> just wiggle it a bit and it'll lift a bit more. Eventually it'll come out. Okay. And If something so weird happening on the screen might mean the gimme's dead. Okay, well I've got a spare gimme that I don't know if that's any more alive than this one is, but uh, we shall see. Oh, the whole freaking motherboard's coming out right now. Okay, RAM is out. Yeah, I've never seen how RAM goes into a Coco. This is really interesting. So for anybody who's looking at this at home right now, this is a Disto memory board. Disto Canada, eh? Um, so yeah, I've never added 512K to a Cocoa before. So on the motherboard, there's these uh, white pin connections. You know what these remind me of? They remind me of like the old um, motherboard power connections, like on a PC motherboard. So there's like there's like three of these connectors here. Okay, and, and I guess this is where the old Cocoa RAM was in the motherboard before, huh? It looks like four sockets here for the old RAM. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so those old RAM sockets are now removed. Now, what are the capacitors that get clipped? I understand when you add RAM, you got to clip a few capacitors. <clears throat> I think one of them was between the uh, empty sockets and the chips below, and one of them might have been above the sockets. But I'm not sure exactly where. I'll just go check. But I've, no. yeah, I've, I'm, I'm kind of like visually inspecting it right now. I don't see anything that looks like it's clipped here at the moment. It, it's it's probably C65 and C66, I believe. Yeah, I don't see them, but I guess that's not that important for right now. Um, all right, so I pulled the RAM expansion. Out. Now, right now, by pulling this RAM expansion out, I can't boot up this Coco with onboard you RAM because there isn't. Well, yeah, go ahead and turn it on anyway. Just see turn what it on just to see what happens. Okay, now the screen's a little bit different. That's interesting. Yep. Okay. Interesting little uh, color pattern here, huh? Well, you now have a, a music visualizer without the music. Yeah, as I say, this is uh, not quite on par with a Sockmaster demo, but those, they almost look like smiley faces in there. Are we seeing oh. the 256 color mode there? <laughs> this is, uh, I'm seeing like emojis in here. I see, I, I see little smiley faces showing up. Um, uh. The Coco had emojis before anybody knew what an emoji was. Okay. Very cool. All right. So we're going to try to reseat the RAM. These are very long pins. Yep. I don't think the RAM was the problem. <laughs> okay. I hopefully I haven't bent any of these damn pins. Doesn't look like it. All right, so let's try to repower it. Oh, there we go. Extended Color Basic 2.0, licensed to Tandy Corporation and Microware Systems Corp. Yay, we fixed it. <laughs> um, I it was just a loose connection on the RAM. Okay. Wow, that was far too easy. You want to do another one? I got another Cocoa that doesn't turn on. <laughs> that was what way too that? easy. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm... I'm I'm glad that it works, but I'm disappointed I didn't have to do more crap to get it working. <laughs> fireworks. Yeah, we did not release the magic smoke at all. Um, very cool. So, um, yeah, that is pretty cool. So just reseeding the RAM. All right. So uh, let me move this window around here. Kaka, kaka, kaka. Where are you going at, Mr. RF Capture? All right. So we're going to now. I, I know that um, I know that Mark Marlette sells something called the Protector, and that's supposed to protect the Hitachi CPU. Mm -hmm. Where does that go? Does that go? Is that like a in line with the CPU socket, or does it go anywhere between like the uh, bus connection and the CPU? I think it just plugs into the CPU socket. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's like a daughter board uh, connection. It goes right on top of the uh, CPU. 
uh, socket, and then the uh, and then CPU goes process. in that. Correct. So it's kind of like a fuse or a circuit breaker where it'll it'll kill itself before it lets the processor get killed. Right. But with the prices of CPUs right now, uh, that protector is like twenty five dollars. Um, <laughs> I could go through twenty five CPUs before I have to. Uh... <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, for right now. Okay. So yeah, so this this Coco is 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 important to me for because this is the the first Coco three I've had since my original, and I and I got it from Neil Blanchard. So it's a Canadian Coco, and it's a it's a former celebrity owned Coco. So and it's my first Coco since my original Coco. So it's very special to me. Um, so I'm very happy that it's working. So I'm gonna shut him off. I'm going to put Humpty Dumpty back together. I'm going to turn him on one more time, make sure he still works. And I'll go run out in my garage and I'll grab my other Coco. Because that's the one I brought back from Orlando that didn't work either. And I didn't have time to work on it. But since I have two of the most renowned leading world surgeons on Coco 3s with me, I'd be foolish to not take advantage what? of this opportunity. i got to remember to reinsert my keyboard connection too, right? Uh, that's not so let's go ahead and put my uh, keyboard little r ribbon cable back in its little doohickey. Okay, ribbon cable. Get back in there. Disto Canada, eh? Good times. We're not far from where I used to live. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so I got the keyboard back. Let's keyboard go. keyboard mylars in place. Uh, why does this feel like it's a little bit rickety? It's like a little rocking back and forth. Look, right now. There are two uh, rubber rings somewhere in the case. There is there's one little rubber baby buggy bumper underneath the keyboard in the center. And that's all there is. Let me see if I just put the lid back on if that will stabilize it. The the rubber rings go uh, between the keyboard and the peg that it's resting on. Mm, no, there are none that I can see. So those may have been lost to the ages. Oh, I, didn't, I don't remember seeing those when I took them out either. All right, let's just put the lid back on and see if it's somewhat stable. Okay, yeah. the lid is back on. Let's turn it on one more time. Oh, I don't have my composite connections plugged in. Let's pl let me plug in my uh, connection so we can see it. Audio, video, power. Yes, we, we've got the powder, Captain. All right, so it still powers up. Let me put back in my multicolored screws. So I've gone ahead and I've kept in the new CPU anyways, just because the other CPU looked like it's seen better days. All of its legs were like all over the place. Yeah, it was a shoddy Canadian knockoff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. Don't don't forget uh, the longer screws go in the back. Yeah, that happens to a lot of people. Don't put the long screws in the front because they'll poke through your case. Ah, uh, not good. All right, so let's let's line up all my screws. Yeah, that's probably why there's different colors. So yeah, the the silver and the black ones are the shorter ones. So we'll put those together. And I've got a medium length one. I'll put that one where the warranty sticker goes. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking all this crap up right now because the black screen's in the way. All right. Um, Is there French on the bottom of your cocoa? Yeah, I'll show it to you in just a second. It all actually right. is. Yeah, that's that makes it somewhat, you know, unique. Oh, there's, you know, that screw's still there. Okay. So that one's not going anywhere. Uh, yeah, also um, the Canadian versions also have that, that wire mesh. Uh, oh, it's not wire. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's like that a, mesh. It's like yeah. a, looks like a bug screen, you know? 
it's strange that the Canadian ones have more components than the U.S. ones. <laughs> yeah, so I'll I'll pan the camera around so you can read the whole label from the bottom of this thing here. Yeah, it's and it's it's in two languages. It's in English and in uh, Quebecian. Can I put a screw over here? Are you going to go in there? I don't know. I'm not worried about you, bro. All right. So, yeah, let me show you the labels here. I'm not sure how well you can see these here. But, yeah, so this one here says 128K Color Computer 3 and then uh, Ordinateur Color 3 Day 128. Um, you got some more Frenchy stuff on here. Double insulated in in sole and double. <laughs> That's like my bad fake Spanish. I can always put like an L in front and an O in the back, like L insulato. Um, I don't know how to do fake French though. I put a le in front of everything. Le insulato. <laughs> uh, complies with Department of Communications. Yeah, so that's neat. I've I've not seen um, um, like multi-language French stuff. I don't see that very often in the States. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. So 26-3334. Pretty neat. And it works. So that was literally just reseeding the RAM upgrade was all that really needed. And again, let me turn it on one more time. Oh, of course, I don't have my composite cables plugged back in again. And does he work? Yes, he still turns on. Very happy about that. Very cool. One down. So I'm going to just move him out of the way for a minute. But th this is my production machine. This is the one I do all my videos on. Uh, this thing has served me well for over a year. Strange. <clears throat> You're doing your videos on Canadian cocoa. On a Canadian I'm, cocoa, yeah. And I did my videos on an Australian cocoa. Oh wow! We got to represent our, our, you know, our community. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go grab my other one. I'll be right back. This is fun. Oh, who, who was here? Grant says, shoot, I missed it. What was wrong with it? Um, William Locklear is here. That didn't take long at all. And then Araya Dilia, your technical computer. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, anyways, uh, Grant, all it was was the, the memory upgrade board needed to be unplugged and replugged. But I got one more Coco 3 to work on. So, I'm going to go pull that from the garage and I'll be right back. There might be some magic smoke here. yet. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a commercial until I return. TRS-80, MC-10, and Dragon computers. Our basic games cover the range of genres from arcade, to text adventures, to simulations, to 3D dungeon crawls. This is our latest puzzle game from Japan, Group Panic. <laughs> hmm? the so come on and drop by our website and download our latest games. <laughs> Gonna stop fun, beat smooth, like landing the plane and top gun. Slips you in pieces like the Triforce if you think you're cool. Wise girls are building in Ghostbusters on Nintendo names. Like Warcraft and Diablo, I get hexed a lot. I get crossed out and hexed a lot. I gave up a normal life with kids and a wife for Xbox. It's pathetic, yes I said it. Honest, I don't know where to go. Gonna give with my son, let's make it watch TV grow. Why'd you interrupt me, Stagger? I'm just playing Street Fighter 2. What kind of business is this? This is some called business. Pennsylvania City Show. Back. And we're back. We are back from commercial. 
Okay, word from our sponsors. All right, so this is cocoa number two. This one will hopefully be my spare cocoa, but this one was dead on arrival. This is one of the ones I brought back from my Orlando trip that I got from Brian Blake. This is another similar situation where it turns on to a green screen, but does not quite show full signs of life. So let's just fire it up and we'll look at the current display and then we'll try our troubleshooting tips. So when I hit the power button, oh, this one's now green, uh, not even green, it's just black. Is the uh, composite plugged into the audio jack? No, it is, no, because the, um, hold on. Video is white, audio is red. So yeah, now this is... Let's get it. Okay, so now here's a different display. Now it's kind of checkerboardy, right? And it seems to be running at 50 hertz. At 50 hertz? Um, it, because there's a... Here we go. It just came on. Extended Basic 2.0. Dude, what the F? You got something loose. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hit it. So, so right now we've seen kind of some of the symptoms. You go to turn it on and it doesn't quite come to life, right? So let's... Um, take it apart and uh, reseat some things. Yeah, we're going to take it apart and reseat some things. Now this one's got a different memory board in it. I'm going to hover over some of the components. Okay. So this one for its memory board here, this is an actual old version Cloud 9. And from what you can see here, this one's actually using two SIMs for its memory instead of all the individual chips. Mm -hmm. um, this also has a 6309, which is socketed. And that one looks better. And this one has an 87 gimme in it. So you can actually see on the gimme right here, it says uh, 87, 1987 Korea. And Your other has an 86? Uh, no, the other one's an 87 as well. All right. Okay, so this one, this is my Hitachi, and this one, um, this one, again, the letters are upside down. When I'm looking at, like, facing the, uh, the cartridge slot, the letters to the Hitachi processor are upside down. And then here's my, here's my RAM board. This one is definitely a lot less bulky than the Disto one is. The Disto one seemed to occupy a lot of space. And obviously now the Triad's even smaller. Um, it's really tiny. So I should try the RAM board first then, right? Since that, that seemed to work last time, and that's an easy thing to uh, dis, dislodge, I guess. You also need to uh, reseat the SIM um, Yeah, you should SIM wiggle. modules. Okay. So for the moment here, where's my power cord? I'm going to um, unplug the Coco. Okay, so no chance of short-circuiting. Okay, so we're going to. All right, so to, to reseat the Sims, that's pretty easy. You just the little legs pop off to the side. God, this reminds me of the old like what was this on like a 386 or 486 computer? Use these old Sims, right? This is old, old school PC memory. All right. So these are the Sim modules. I've just pulled them out. Okay. Well, this one came out a hell of a lot easier too. One side of it did anyways. So yeah, adding 512K to a Coco, pretty easy. Okay, so this has got actually kind of a, a brick colored plastic receptacle where the Canadian one had white plastic. I know the color is irrelevant when it comes to, to that, but that's just a little observation. Um, here's the original motherboard RAM. That's, okay, this one I can actually see the cut capacitor from this angle here too. And I know this is something that Grant wants to do. So Grant, I'm not sure how well you can see this. I'm not sure how well I can see it right now. But okay, so one of the capacitors is at the bottom of the RAM and one of its legs is cut off right there. I'm doing a shitty job of holding this camera. Okay, so right here I can see this capacitor is cut. The other so one, one, just one like leg that. is gone and the other one is kind of towards the top of the RAM. No, that one's not cut. Okay. So this one at the bottom of the RAM is cut. I don't know where the other capacitor is that needs to get cut. It's, it's further up. Keep going up. Uh, it's not the right top there. one. Yes, Which it's is? right there. It's cut. 
right this there. This one here? That's yep. cut? Yeah, I see. It looks like it's cut. It looks pretty... So, oh, is, is it cut in the middle? I can't even tell from here. I need. Uh, let me get my flashlight out and look at that. That could be. If it is cut, it's really hard for me to see. If it wasn't cut, it would still run. It's not really all that critical. No, it doesn't look like it's cut, though. I got my flashlight on it. And maybe it is. I, Dude, I can't tell, dude. Whatever. It's working. Damn thing's working. Okay. So what I've done right now is I've removed the upgrade board. And um, before I... Should I reseat the RAM before I put it on or put it on after? After. After. All right. So let me get the camera where you can see what the hell I'm doing here. Because I can't see what the hell I'm doing. Um, power supply is kind of in the way. Let's get this out of the way here. All right. So... Okay. Here's... So when you look at the bottom of the RAM board too... I'm just because I've never done this before, and I know Grant just ordered his upgrade, so I'm trying to give him a, a little primer for what he's going to have to do. So, yeah, basically, there's a long edge of pins and a short edge of pins, and they match up with the with what's on the motherboard here, Grant. Right? So, the long so you're going to pull out these four things here. There's a couple of capacitor legs that need to be amputated, and then you just kind of match up the long pins with the short pins, and this literally pushes straight down. You got to put a little bit of pressure on it. There's basically no way to do it wrong. There's, and that's a great way to put it. There's no way to do this wrong. So, and that actually inserted pretty easily. All right. So now it's time to put my Sims back in. This is old school memory, man. Holy crap. Okay, one sim. NEC RAM made in Singapore. Uh, two sims. Okay, sims are back in. All right, let's let's reapply power to the Coco. Oh, I unplugged it. Okay. Let's see if anybody's paying attention besides me. All right, let's plug it back in. You learning how to Cocos. Each. Okay, it fired right up. Standard Basic 2.0 microwave. Go ahead and tap around the uh, RAM area, and especially on top of the Sims, just lightly. And tap the gimme and tap the CPU. All right. So what I'm going to do here, real quick, is I'm going to. You want to see it's going to crash when you tap them. All right, so hold on. Let me just do this real quick. For those of you who are not familiar with the art of coding, I'm going to learn you all one right now. 10. Print. This is awesome. 20. Go to 10. Run. Okay, so that'll keep running. Actually, and then now as I... Let me shrink this down. So we'll see if it freezes. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of kick the tires a little bit, right? So I'm going to tap on the RAM, tap on this. I'm going to smack the crap out of the gimme a little bit. Hey, gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I'll even beat on the CPU. Anybody home? Hey, gimme. There's people there. Okay. What was that, Sockmaster? That sucker looks pretty bulletproof there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the power connector, you see the one where it looks like it's a blue, black. Yeah, wiggle that around a little bit. All right. Is that what connects like the power supply to the motherboard? Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. Wiggling. Let me move that out of the way. Okay. So here's the power connection. I'm wiggling on this. Hopefully, I won't shock the living hell out of me. Oh, that's only uh, 12 or so. <laughs> and Grant says, so there's no way I can screw it up? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, yeah. and then and then do a drop test. Take it, uh, put put it, uh, hover it for like about an inch and then just drop it. Or half an inch. Rule number one. Drop it. Oh, that's good. This is awesome. It's still running. Everything is awesome. 
Everything is awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's cool. So I now have two working Coco 3s with 512K RAM and 6309s. With 87 gimmies, mind you. All right, I'm happy. So in both cases, it was really just reseating the RAM boards is what it looks like. So now the question is, which one do I put back into production? I think I gotta, I gotta stay with the Canadian one because the Neil Blanchard Coco has done me well for a long time. It's got the deluxe French uh, text on it, so it's better. Yeah, wee oui, wee. Oui. Uh -huh. All right, and merci to you, uh, Monsieur Master. Um, cool, good times. That was it. Was just too easy. I've it's been like thirty-seven minutes, and we've fixed two cocos. No mm -hmm. soldering was involved. They basically never die. They don't yeah, die. That's a good thing. Yeah, and you know the um the other cocoa I bought, I bought it as um, not working, and it worked. And sometimes people don't know that the um, the RF out is not composite. But in the case of the cocoa, there actually is a composite, but you know, who knows? But when they, when I bought it, I took a gamble on it as a not working cocoa three and it actually worked. Um, <laughs> so William Locklear says, I'm glad, I am glad had no issues with both of your, co of my cocoa threes, but he says now my Commodore X SX 64 is another story. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't had to work on a Commodore. Hey, Michael Brandt just showed up. Yeah, Michael, this is the one I brought back from you in Orlando. And um, this one is the one that like kind of turned on but didn't. And um, yeah, it's alive. It's alive! It's live! Um, so I, ha I have a spare 6309 and um, I'm going to... So the other 6309, like I don't know how, how closely you can... Let me find these like really weird looking solder. It, it, like, it almost looks like... Um, let me move this out of the way. It looks like a, it's a pulled chip or something. They pulled it out of a, a out of a board. Oh, like where you sometimes if it's if it's hard soldered to the motherboard, they have to desolder it or something. Correct. What board would have a six three zero nine on it? Hmm, I don't know. He so, might have bought it, you know, because man transcode too, and I just haven't been able to do it because. First, I had problems where my, my freaking Windows 10 machine stopped working with Capture. I had to redo my PC and last weekend, and then this weekend, the damn Coco dies on me. So, um, you know, it's like I, I could write a country music song right now. So, um, but the good news is now I got Coco's, I got Coco's to spare. That's a beautiful thing. All right. Coco. So we'll shut this guy down and um, far out. Far out. I'm a happy camper. Thanks, guys. And thank you, Richard, for sending those processors so quickly, too. Oh, uh, no problem. That was, uh, yeah, that was like fast. Wicked fast. Yeah, we have a, luckily, we have a post office that's open seven days a week. So I usually just, when I need to ship stuff out, I just drop it off there. Hmm. So you're basically saying right now that the protect I mean the protector is a good thing, but the cost the cost of the processor is so low now that you could literally go through a whole bunch of processors in the unlikely event you smoke them. Um, before what you do go three oh nines cost these days. Uh see I sell them for three dollars and forty nine cents each, you know, from here, but you can get them as low as a dollar, a little over a dollar thirty in China, but then it takes about three weeks to get them, three to four, five weeks to get them. They're free. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, is there any concern, and this is not meant to be a um, culturally disparaging question. It's a legitimate question. Um, when you order some of these things from China, because I've heard horror stories of people getting circuit boards and other things that not always being the best quality. So when you order something like a Hitachi 6309, is there a chance you're going to get a knockoff or is it, does it have to be a legit chip? There is a pretty high probability that it's fake. Really? Yeah. Kind of bad. Hmm. So, well, what can you... Many times. 
they, they look the same, they work, but they're not real. Okay, so it, so some of the ones you might buy might be literally cloned, cloned yeah. CPUs. It's a possibility. But then again, they also might be buying uh, what they call old pool or old stock uh, warehouse stuff since the Hitachi uh, is, hasn't been made in years. So they just, you know, they dump their excess inventory out on the open market and usually the Chinese will buy them off. Okay. Um, in one case, I've gotten uh, somebody was reselling e-waste. They take all the chips off all yeah. the junk equipment. And uh, they run all the chips through a grinder to polish off the top surface. And then they run it through another machine that reprints new labels, numbers, and identification on the chips. And then they sell it to you. And, I, yeah, that's, and I, that's a common yeah. practice in the RAM market, too. Or if something doesn't make it as the super good RAM, it'll get resold as value RAM. Yeah, and they, they could erase that and remark it as the super good one and sell it to you even though it's not, something like that. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, the Intel processors, the Pentium processors, it was a huge problem uh, back in the 90s. That they, they, would, they would call them uh, reworked or remarked. They would sand them off and then just put a, a stamp on the... Uh, they, what they would buy is the 75 megahertz ones, and then they would uh, sand them off and then uh, relabel them as 150 megahertz, for example, and sell them off that way. Oh, wow. I thought they'd go in the other direction because sometimes, like the processor might not run at full speed, but it, like the sixty-six might not run at sixty-six, but they could sell it as a thirty-three, and it would probably work within that spec. The one fifty is a more valuable processor and sells for more money, so they'll just yeah. mark a lesser part for a higher yeah. rating. And well, it, it'll probably work, but not as reliably as an actual one fifty. Right. Uh, cool. Well, I don't think we have anything left to do here on this uh, surgery project. That was pretty easy. It's um, the thing that I that I would like to learn, but it's going to be a slow process. Is I would actually like to learn how to like solder and desolder stuff. It's just something I've never done before. I'm sure I'm probably capable of it if I did it a few times, but I don't <laughs> want to practice learning how to solder on a live cocoa. You know, I almost want to get like a cadaver. And, and just try it and get build up a little bit of a skill set with actually placing the solder down, you know? Set aside some old dead VCR or something and just yeah. mess around with that. Yeah. That's a whole nother level. Like when something's in a socket and you just have to pop it out and pop it in, that's, you know, that's not even, that's barely considered technical work right there. Um, but I'm glad it was that easy. Yeah. Uh, desoldering a 6809 is pretty difficult yeah and i've heard there's different ways to do it like some people will cut the legs off and then just you know do it that way yeah that's, if, that's supposedly the easier way i guess if you if you're new to desoldering things i would suggest you cut the legs off because otherwise you're going to ruin the board right almost a guarantee on a chip that large a little chip you can get out but if it has 40 pins mm-hmm um, it's really tricky to desolder enough of it at once to get it to move without burning the board. Ah. Not gotcha. even worse, when you, when you pull it out, sometimes you'll even pull the traces up as well, the pads and the traces. If you're and too impatient to get it out, yeah, you're going to pull hard and you're just going to tear things off, <laughs> off, the, uh, off the PCB. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. That's something I'm not willing to do. Um, you know, it's, it's good to know your limitations, and I don't want to be overzealous on something I could potentially ruin. So um, it'd be it'd be interesting to to practice that and learn how to do that. Um, uh, luckily, now we have two opportunities, like twice per year now, between Coco Fest and Tandy Assembly. If I'm really screwed, I can just wait and, and catch up with Mark Marlette and Cloud9 and let an expert do it. So, <laughs> so yep. Or mail it to Richard. <laughs> well, actually, I'm going to be up at Tandy Assembly, and I'm going to bring up all my stuff as well, so I can, I can also do repairs. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I, I probably, because I have my third Coco 3 that is stock, I'm thinking I probably want to get like a 512K board and a 6309 for that. 
<laughs> so, um, and now we all have a, a backup to my backup of my 512K Coco. Yeah, Mark's, uh, that 512K Triad is an awesome um, board. Highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah. And on that one, you really don't, because the RAM is soldered onto the PCB, there's nothing to reseat at that point. It's really just you reseat the board. Correct. Uh, and I noticed that his, and I know that uh, Jim Brain is, is I saw in the in the latest uh, Glenside newsletter, they showed Jim Brain is working on a 2 meg memory upgrade that plugs into the gimme socket. And, and, you, and I guess the RAM kind of piggybacks off of that. It would have to go in the gimme socket because the, the, the header sockets that the 512K plugs into don't have enough address lines to uh, to support two megs. Ah, okay. But that one looks like a real easy one to insert because you just it like goes in line with the gimme. So you pull out the gimme, you stick this in, and you put the gimme right back on top of that. Um, but I think that's still kind of in the prototyping or finalizing phases. So you're saying it doesn't plug into the uh, the regular uh, memory headers, just the uh, gimme? Uh, that's what it looked like from the picture in the newsletter. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like a kind of like a, a gimme daughter card, and you plug you plug this into where the gimme goes, and then it's got another socket that the gimme goes in on top of it, and it's got the RAM off to the side, um, and it's a two meg board. Interesting. Yeah. And I think I've asked this question. I think one of you guys already answered it. But like, if you get a two meg, you already have the five twelve, right? So RAM is RAM, and it's all addressed kind of the same way. Yes. And so any any of the like original Coco stuff that required five twelve, that memory is addressed the same way it would be on a two meg upgrade. Yes, I I don't think there's anything that is incompatible with the two megs. I don't, I'm not aware of any. Anyway, okay. anything anything that runs in 512K ought to run on the two megs. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, it's one of these things where if it ever comes out and it's reasonably priced, I would probably get it. But the only thing you would need two megs for would really be o OS 9, right? Because nothing else, nothing in RS DOS will will address that, right? I made a demo way back for a Coco Pass that used all the memory, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I guess pretty much at least in Sockmaster's hands, there's everything's possible. But <laughs> uh, that's cool. That's definitely cool. All right. Well, I guess we're gonna wrap up the live stream here. So thank you everybody who watched too. Uh, let me end that broadcast. So uh, and now I can get back to testing OS nine. So hopefully this weekend on Coco Talk, I can demo OS nine on a real Coco. So look forward to that. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.